On the Profile Interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the National President of SANU. It brings us up to speed on the welfare of workers in the sector, while also speaking on the RS Science report and the position of the union. Good to have you on the program. Nice being here, Sharon. Thank you for having me. A lot is happening in the world of work, and particularly for the Senior Staff Association of um, Nigerian Universities. Your leadership is concerned about um, the no work, no pay um, rule that was um, initiated during the Buhari, um, Buhari administration. But right now, um, President Tinubu um, has actually approved and uh, started disbursement of um, the um, withheld salaries for members of ASU. Can you tell us why uh, we don't have members of SANU yet to receive their own payment of withheld salary, even though members of SANU and NASU were the first to go back to work? Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, on this very uh, topical issue, burning issue. When uh, our discussions with government broke down and we had to declare an industrial dispute, um, after like two months, uh, the federal government, then under the Ministry of Education, uh, the minister was Madam Adamu Adamu, in conjunction with the Ministry of Officials and then the Executive Secretary of NUC invited us to, to the table to discuss the issues. And uh, for the benefit of our viewers, those issues were the uh, discontinuation of the, the, the uh, renegotiation exercise that was going on between us and the federal government on the 2009 signed agreement. And then, of course, the non-payment of some of our allowances, uh, like the under allowances, then the non-release of stabilization funds, uh, and then dissolution of uh, governing councils of the federal universities, and then some other issues that will have been pending. Then um, during the negotiations we have had with the, with the government and the minister, then we reach an agreement to suspend the strike after convincing us and showing us clearly that those demands were going to be made. Uh, and that the 2023 appropriation or the budget, as you may want to call it, would encapsulate and contain those allowances. Clearly, we were shown that the sum of 50 billion naira was earmarked for the payment of an allowances to all workers in the universities. And then the salary increment, which the government offered to pay 25 and 35 percent for workers in the universities and uh, other tertiary institutions. Then the, the, uh, the sum of another 100 billion was also made available for workers in other tertiary institutions. Then, so very quickly, uh, before you go ahead with um, some of the um, salient um, issues or points that um, your union is actually faced with, what has been the response of your members? What is the, what's the state of mind of your members? What kind of calls have you been receiving from your members? concerning the withheld salaries that is not yet um, being disbursed to SANU members? Well, uh, we have been under pressure. As leaders, we have been under pressure. Our members uh, really run, have run out of patience simply for the uh, injustice method on us as non-teaching staff. Because if you recall in October, the current president, uh, President Tinibu, gave a waiver that all the, I mean, four months of the withheld salaries should be released to workers in the universities. And um, we received that news with some mixed feelings. However, we felt it was a departure from the past. From November running fast forward to this month, early this month, ASU members received four months of uh, the salaries as promised by the president, but conspicuously missing by the non-teaching staff. Which made up of so how Asu many months? For, for how no, many for, months is that of Sanu and Nasu? No dime was released to us. We will how many months is the government owing? Is it four, four months, months or two months? Four months. Four months. But were you um, on strike as um, during the period that Asu was on strike last year? 
Yes, ASU started their strike in February, ended in October. We, we started ours in March, ended in August. Okay. So that was what happened. So the, the four months that was promised us, we never saw till today. And the agita agitation started from our different campuses, asking questions. And upon inquiry, we got to understand that the memo conveying the approval of the president from the Office of the Chief of Staff contained only ASU. And that was what led to the payment of only ASU members by the Accountant General to the IPPIS. And um, we had to now write a protest letter to the Chief of Staff and the Minister of Education, uh, calling their attention to the you know, injustice meted on us. And as I'm talking to you, those letters were acknowledged, immediately they were received, but we never got any response, positive response from the Office of the Chief of Staff. And that was why we started engagements. We reached out to the Minister of Education and he confirmed to us that the approval, or he confirmed to us that the approval given by the president was for the all the unions and that he was going to interact with uh, those that matter or those that were, that were handling the issue. That was the last we heard of it, and nothing has changed. Very quickly, happened. very quickly, not that we are deviating from the um, crux of the matter. Um, I would like to know what your opinion is on trade unionism and the right to strike, the right to protest. Because um, when um, the last administration introduced a no work, no pay policy, I know many trade unionists were not in support of that because um, according to ILO convention, which Nigeria is a party to, we know that people have the right to protest and go on strike. But as a trade unionist, um, how would you react to this development? For any democratic setting and a civilized society, no government should attempt to stifle the voice of the masses or voices of the people. The right to strike, the right to protest are inherent within the laws of this country and like you said even beyond and therefore we find it absurd that any government will just wake up one day and say people cannot air their views people cannot differ from the voices of their leaders so it was we were taken aback actually and um, no unionist will ever support this idea of stifling the voice of the masses and so doing that is like um you know, beating a child and asking the child not to cry. So the laws of the land gives us the right to strike when we have, but there are processes and procedures. And that's why when government decided to invoke the no hope, no pay, we told them that that was illegal because in the agreement we signed with the then government of Buhari, the last portion read non-victimization clause. And that was clearly spelled out that no member of our union shall be victimized or denied of any his or of any of his his or her right for taking part of in the strike very quickly collective bargaining agreement is one um, particular process that um, both uh, workers employers of labor and government do actually participate in if you would agree with that uh, particular statement um, what would be your reaction towards the fact that employers of labor and at times government many times refuse to actually um, yield to the collective bargaining agreement? Because before um, Sanu, Nasu, Asu decide to withdraw their services, they've had long time agreement with government. But it's because government could not meet up with its demands, it's why they actually have to go on strike. So what more do you have to say about the fact that collective bargaining agreement is something that we do not honor in the country? Also, I'd like you to tell us if maybe some of the demands um, that was reached as some of the demand as some of the demands or requests by the union, maybe there are some of they are too bogus, and maybe you actually have to sit down on the table. To, uh, to start the conversation all over and probably maybe there might be a more realistic agreement. Well, when we say something, when you call something as collective, you know, bargaining agreements, it means it's something consensual. Both parties agree to sit down on some terms and conditions. Nobody 
sign those agreements under duress. That you shift your base, they shift their base, you meet uh, the middle ground and sign. It was something collective. So it is only expected that both parties respect what they have signed. But like you mentioned, it is most at times a deny, I mean, a refusal on the part of the employers. You sign an agreement, you know, willingly, and then only to come and renege, you know, thereafter. It's, it's, it's quite absurd. It's quite uh, intriguing that, uh, that that you you as an employer, you know, sit, would sit with, a, with your employee, discuss, you know, an agreement, and then sign, and then you come to refuse to, you know, respect it. So my position on this is that as long as this uh, refusal to, you know, adhere to these collective ag bargaining agreements, you know, uh, continues, there will continuously be, uh, you know, uh, industrial dispute, you know, and this will retard development, will also stop progress and, 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 and also functionality of workers in their places of work. And then uh, uh, employers of labor should also understand that you must not sign what you cannot give. We know what is on the table. We know what is in the post of government. We know what the government can give. In the cases of in the case of our universities, for example, the membership of San, we so you know a lot of us are accountants who work in the bursary. We know what the universities receive. We pay workers in the university, and therefore whatever we discuss with them, we know clearly what government gives, what is on the table and what the government can afford. So no union leader, and especially from the non-teaching stock, will come to the table empty-headed without necessarily having the background of what is in the post of government. Agreements are never signed or cast in iron or in stone. So when you sit and sign an agreement and then implementation becomes a problem, the onus is on the employer to re-invite the employee or the union or whatever representatives to sit down again and then talk reality and talk sense. On, in this particular manner, on this particular issue, provisions were already made in the 2023 budget. I've told you 50 billion Naira was appropriated and approved by the National Assembly to take care of the earned allowances. We do not know where this money went to because it's the 2023 budget you know, has elapsed. And now we were told that it was carried over in 2024. We have not seen anything. The salary increment of 25 and 35%, even though that was not what we asked for, but it was now awarded to us. It was also captured, and the sum of 100 billion naira was also you know, encapsulated in the 2023 budget, but no dime so was what, released. What is, the ministry, what is the ministry saying? Are they reacting to this development, owing to the fact that you are aware that it was budgeted for and it was not expended. If only they could uh, tell us or explain, you know, what happened. We wouldn't have been dumbfounded. But the issue is that nobody is saying anything. Government will always wait until when workers strike or when workers protest. That is when they begin to start explanations. Now you've issued an ultimatum that within seven days, you would actually have to embark on an industrial action. Why do you actually have to do this at this time? And what does government need to do to maybe perhaps prevent this strike from happening? What baffles me and many of our colleagues is that this story that we are talking about is in the public glare, is in the, pub, in the purview of everybody in Nigeria. So I don't know why it is difficult that up till this point, our managers, our leaders in government finds it difficult to now invite or approach us to say, this is what happened. Please be here with us or give us also a number of days. This money will be paid. Like we said, this is an arrears of something that was kept somewhere. And it is very easy. Within 24 hours, maximum 48 hours, if government is serious, they could still pay this money. But what is even more intriguing in this particular matter about the withheld salary for the non-teaching staff is that the president of the country has approved, has conveyed by his you know, spokesperson, and the minister of education has confirmed that the approval has been given by the president. So who is now subverting the president's approval? We are taken aback, and we cannot understand this. And that's why we have to come out this way, because we are not slaves in Nigeria. We are not slaves in our universities. We work in the same environment. 
We are happy for our colleagues in the academics that have gotten that four months, even though that is not exactly what they asked for. But what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. So very quickly, I'd like you to respond to the Oral Sawyer's report. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has ordered that it should be implemented. You work or you lead workers that are actually in the public um, system. Um, how has your members been reacting to this? Is there any form of panic or is it well received by your members? Well, as a labor leader, uh, it's quite intriguing again to hear our leaders trying to invite problems for themselves. Here we are in a country called Nigeria, where the economy is in its doldrums, where people are suffering, where people are finding it difficult to even feed, where you are talking about a report that was uh, submitted to government, you know, uh, over 10 years ago, and then two other previous governments claimed that they had commissioned its implementation. And today, uh, President Tinibu is saying that they should implement. So I don't know what type of implementation. If Tinibu's implementation would be that of, that, like that of uh, did, uh, Jonathan and Buhari, fine and good, because we never saw anything happening. We need to put our thinking caps. Already people are protesting everywhere about hunger, about starvation, about deprivation, about lack of so many amenities. So is it, are you now telling us that these people, if you send them to the labor market, no additional security issues will come up? And is that our priority? How much are you going to save if you scrap government agencies? How much is the salary involved? If there is an agency of government or an arm of government that should be collapsed, that should be merged, is the National Assembly. For me, we do not need a bicameral, you know, uh, legislature in Nigeria. We can have, we can collapse the the House of Reps with this with the with the Senate. For example, the House of Reps has more representation. You know, it represents more communities. It's more local to our communities than the national than the, than the Senate. Most of these senators are former governors, former ministers, former traditional rulers, and so on. They are already rich. They are already fat. You know, they are belly full. They don't need any money that will come extra. So closing that national, I mean, the, the, the Senate will be the best thing that will happen because so much money will be saved and it will be pumped into the economy and many other people will have jobs to do and government can provide more amenities. So Orestania report uh, implementation is just a distraction. The National Assembly should be matched. We should have one assembly. The, uh, the House of Reps is enough to cover and help Nigerians you know, put any law you want. It's more, it's more vibrant, you have more younger people there, and they have more to offer. So this is our position, or this is my own personal position, because uh, the Oresanya report is uh, overtaken by events. Any attempt to come and say you want to match A and B, B and C, D and E, you are just going to create more problems for the society. And any sensitive government should understand that the security situation today is exacerbated by idle minds. So sending me people out of their jobs, you will need to spend more money that you will that you are claiming or intending to save by removing these people from 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 offices in trying to fight insecurity. You have a great evening. Thank you. Have a great evening too. Bye. Now go there, so So madam, as I move. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.